So thanks very much for doing this, Naila. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And um, I was wondering if we could start by you telling us something about your musical background. Well, I'm, you know, I come from a musical family. Um, my mother is a musician. My grandmother was also a musician. But uh, my mom, you know, was a musician. And I grew up with music in the house. I grew up listening to her you know, practice. You know, she practiced Chopin. She, you know, uh, played jazz. She would play at certain jazz clubs. She played in church. And so I grew up with that in the house, listening to music all the time and listening to her practice. And um, so it, it, there was never a time when music wasn't in my life. It was always mm -hmm. a part of my life, you know, as far back as I could remember. Did she give you piano lessons? No, um, she, you know, of course she taught me the keyboard, but then I, I started taking lessons at five. Um, wow. Yeah, so initially I went to Harlem School of the Arts when I was little, and then after about a year, I went to Manhattan School of Music pre-college. And I wrote a short piece, and I used it as one of my audition pieces for the pre-college division. So I started writing very early, around five. And um, you know that was how everything started. I see. And um, so you're a pianist as well as a composer, it sounds like. Yeah, yes. yeah, yes. And, and is your background mostly in classical or jazz or both? It's mostly, it's in classical, yeah. you, you know, so that's my training uh, as a classical pianist. And that, that was my, my major training. Jazz and other types of music, I studied on my own. I so see. I would, you know, that I did that more or less on my own, but I, right. um, my actual musical training, formal musical training was classical. And this may be a difficult question to answer, but how would you describe if it's possible, uh, what your compositional style is like, what your music is, is that, is that an, you know, an answerable it's, it's, question? Oh yeah, yeah, I can answer it. Um, yeah. Well, I, I definitely think it's influenced by the classical pieces that I studied as a pianist. I mean, there's mm -hmm. no way around that. There's yeah. no way you can study as much as I did and say I'm, I'm not influenced by it. Yeah. I was, at, but I'm also influenced by, I really like jazz music. I like the harmonies. I like fooling around with different voicings, changing up the voicings. Yeah. And so I'm definitely, I'm influenced by both, I would yeah. say classical and jazz, even though jazz, I didn't study formally. I listened to some of your uh, pieces. I went to your website and I heard a piece that you wrote for piano and oboe and piano and violin, and mm -hmm. they're beautiful pieces. And Thanks. I thought very in, much in the classical tradition. Yeah, but, yeah. But very much, but not, but uh, it didn't sound like anybody else. It, it just, mm -hmm. um, do you have composers that you particularly love? Oh my God, there are just too many. Too many. Yeah, there are yeah. too many that I'm going to name all the usual, you know, Rachmaninoff, Chopin. Right. It's just, I, I don't have, at this point, I don't have a favorite. It's, the list is long. But do you think there are some that influenced your style of writing more than others? Or it's hard to say. Um, man, it's hard to say. Um, I think the, the way I use the piano would be influenced by more um, traditional classical composers, just like the way I utilize the piano. Um, yeah. I, it's funny because if I'm writing for, I primarily write art songs. And so, um, but whenever I'm writing, I give the piano something very substantive. I feel, I feel like I have to, I feel like the pianist is in the driver's seat in a yeah. sense, you know, that, that's how I kind of look at it. So I, I kind of center a lot of stuff around what I write for piano. And you say you write a lot of songs. So does that mean you, uh, is it, is the text usually poetry that you choose? Do you have an interest in poetry? So, or? yeah, so, um, well, I write songs. Well, I think the most popular thing I have are the songs by William Blake. So William mm -hmm. Blake. Yeah. So that's one thing. And then I have um, another, uh, 
long song called uh, the Indian Woman's Death Song by uh, Felicia Heeman. So that that's pretty long, but the rest of the stuff is, you know, all the poetry is by living poets. I see. Yeah, and and some of it is dealing with current issues. Yeah. Yeah. So sometimes, like, we will get together and talk about a particular topic. Like, this is yeah. what I want to talk about. And then from there, they write poetry. And then. Oh, I see. So they're people yeah. you know. Yeah. 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 Or people I've been introduced to. I and see. so we'll think of the topic and then really try to, you know, and then they will come up with the text that is appropriate for that. I see. And then all this training has culminated to the, the climax of your career into writing for classical guitar, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so how did, how, did you, um, how did you approach writing for, I assume that, that you ha didn't know about the guitar that much, right? So how do you do that? How do you learn a new in about a new instrument and start trying to feel comfortable with writing for it? Well, I, it's, I found it to be kind of tricky because I studied orchestration at Juilliard and they don't, we don't talk about the guitar, right? You know, it just doesn't come up. What so a terrible even, course. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> even though it comes like, I have a book on orchestration, but it just, guitar doesn't come up. So, right. yeah, so that I had to kind of, you know, I, got some materials from guitarists to write a piece for him for guitar uh, before this commission with Exequo. Mm. I received an, I got another commission and oh. I wrote a, I wrote a guitar piece uh, for him and um, his name is uh, Klondike Stedman. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wrote a piece for him and um, it was really through that experience that was like the entry point to learning about this instrument. Did you get like a fretboard chart or something like that or? Well, I had, I have a book on I guitar see. writing. Oh, okay. And so yeah, so that was, that was helpful. And so I, I had to, you know, obviously get to know the, the strings, get to know what you could do. Right. And then, I, and I realized, you know, I, can't just write whatever any chord I can't just right. write whatever I want is you know I really have to like respect the instrument I can't just do anything yeah so that was kind of the trickiest thing you know did you work did you work with the guitarist who, who was it Tom how do you say his last name Clippinger Clippinger did you work with him um on the piece and did he make any suggestions about little edits here and there or things like that yeah he did, he did. And so by the time I worked with Tom, I had a little more experience. So I kind of knew, okay, I can do this. I can't do that. Yeah. And so the edits weren't that much That's by the good. time I started working with Tom. Yeah. He had some edits, but it was not, it was not that much. I had a better grasp of what the instrument can do. Yeah. Did you listen to guitar music? Did you try to sort of hear what other people had done or was that not important? I listened to it a little bit, but I didn't want to listen to it too much. I wanted yeah. to figure out what the guitar can do. So yeah, right. so I so I did listen to it, but I tried not to listen to too much of it. Right, because you, you didn't want to. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I really tried to stay away from listening to a lot of it, but yeah. enough to know. Oh, okay, I can do this. I yeah. can't do that. And yeah. and with this, since um, it's a relatively new experience for me. I stayed, I was pretty conservative, you know, because there's some real contemporary stuff out there. And I said, oh, I think I'll stay away from that. Right. And did you think there was something unique to the guitar? Is there something particularly guitar about the content, the ideas, the musical ideas that you came up with for the piece? Do you think the guitar influenced those ideas? N not really, because there are some really, some really uh, guitaristic things that I could have done yeah. that I did not do. I, yeah. I, I, I really stayed conservative. I was okay. like, okay, I need to make this piece playable. You know, I, and I was uh, fooling around with it on the piano and, but I didn't exploit. I know the guitar can do a lot of things that I didn't, right. I didn't even begin to explore. Right. And I think it was because I said, you know, I don't really, I don't know the instrument well enough 
to try all this stuff. I, right. I, so that's why I kind of, I didn't, I didn't touch it. I didn't play around with it. And you call this piece parterre, which I think means something like terraced gardens. Is that close? Yeah, yeah. And I got the, the name came from uh, when I went to Austria, I was in uh, Salzburg and Vienna, and I saw some beautiful gardens there. I was like, oh, yeah. this is, and I've seen it in New York, but not, not as much as I've seen it as I saw it there. Yeah. Wow, this is really beautiful. And um, did the title, uh, did you title the piece after you had written the piece or did, was, did you have the title in mind before you started? I wrote the piece first and then I tried to think like, what, what does this capture? Like, what does it capture? And I was trying to think of something and then I, I thought of that. Oh, I see. So you weren't thinking gardens before, you thought of, you, you wrote the piece and then said, oh, this reminds me of the gardens. It wasn't that you thought of the gardens and then wrote the piece. I wasn't thinking of gardens first. Yeah. I, th I was think I was thinking of a particular mood. Yes. Right, I, I wanted a certain feeling. Yes. I don't, I, I can't say, it's hard to say exactly what I was thinking, but um, I don't think I was thinking gardens first. But right. I, I was thinking of a particular mood. And then a it's like, okay, a peacefulness. What, captures, what, yeah, like what yeah. captures that mood? Yes. And I tried to find the right word to capture the mood. And do you remember which part of the piece you thought of first? The beginning. So the beginning starts with a, a four bar intro with uh, these beautiful chords. Mm -hmm. close yeah you're you're good you're you're fine it's... i'm okay <laughs> um and then there's a, a theme uh which you re you this i think is the most important part of the piece because you repeat yeah it times. yeah exactly it goes, it goes something like this and i apologize to you for not it's, it's it fine better. i understand you're just you know yeah playing. just sort of fumbling through but yeah yeah, yeah. couple times yeah yeah piece. yeah so and that that's a is a beautiful theme is that the, is that the thing you thought of first yeah definitely I was at the piano and and I wanted that to come back yes. because it, it comes back several times so I needed a I needed something to something for you to be anchored into like the yes. listener to be anchored into what I and I always say this so you know I don't want the piece to feel like you're in the wilderness and it kind of goes on and you don't know where you are. So I do right. like having markers. Yes. So, yes, that's yes. what hooked that's what hooked me when I first heard the piece. Is uh I like that theme and I appreciated getting to hear it a few times and that sort of uh gave me an anchor to stand on to then listen to all the other elements of the piece. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um and I think it's a very lovely thing um and so that just came out of you yes or did you tinker with it a lot i was fooling around at the piano with it until because i you know i had several ideas and they just weren't you know it takes a while sometimes to come up with something that i i say okay i think i have something here yeah you know and yeah that took a minute to come up with that but i said i think this is something that i could play with and something i could come back to yeah I didn't, I didn't want it to be a moment that comes up and then it's forgotten. And I noticed the piece has four sharps. When a guitarist cool. sees four sharps, they think, yay, E major, that's my favorite key. But that's not what your piece is. It, it's more like, um, oh, I don't know, G sharp Phrygian or something. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, were you thinking about the harmonic centers of the piece? You, I, I think about like, tonal center yeah but i'm not i'm not necessarily um thinking strictly 
in a particular key, but I do think um, tonal centers, like yeah. in general, when I'm writing. Yeah. I think of like tonal center. Okay, so you came up with this beautiful theme and then uh, it's clear that you wanted to do contrasting things after that. Mm -hmm. And what else would you like to say about the other, other elements of the, the piece? Yeah, so I felt like with this piece, you know, you have this opening that I guess I want to have you anchored into it, but then I, it's important to step away from it and go through different um, channels, right. so to speak. Mm -hmm. And and then of course you come back to it, you know, once it, you're like, so it's, so you're like, oh yes, I remember this, yes. you know, but I definitely have to go, I have to leave and come back. If not, you don't, you won't appreciate it. Yes. And you have a bunch of different ideas. Like one was this kind of uh, 16 dotted eighth note thing with the octaves where you do something like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then. Something like that. Yeah. Which. Um, it sort of keeps a little bit of that rhythm from the, um, the first theme where you have the, at the end of the first theme where you have. Um, I don't know if you meant to create a relationship there and, or not, but uh, do you, do you come up with these ideas sort of instinctively or are you, are you kind of planning where you put your different ideas? Well, I have to say some of it, some of it might is instinct and some of it is um, I, I want to have a, I want to have some kind of contrast there, yeah. you know, but yeah, but some of it is instinctive, but I think, okay, and, and also I was at the piano, so I was thinking pianistically there. Yes. When, when I did that. So yeah. A grand, a grand yeah. Was, <laughs> pom, 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 yeah. Pom. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I I was yeah. thinking like a pianist there. Yeah. You know, I don't know how guitaristic that is, but anyway, yeah. So I was um, and I wanted to kind of fool around with the rhythm and and how it felt there yeah. in that particular section. And then at the end, you have a kind of cadenza. Yeah. Which is a, a sort of virtuosic flourish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to because for that part I wanted to get away from the texture that I had previously. I wanted this once again I was thinking like a pianist and I I wanted this sort of um like it says cadenza. Yeah. So I wanted a moment where you could show off. Right. And um, you know, do all your virtuosic moves there, and and take a break. I said, okay, because after a while, I found myself saying, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting tired of this texture. Mm -hmm. I need to get away from this, even if it's only it's only six measures, because yeah. I'm I'm looking at it now, and um, it's only six measures. But I said I have to get away from this and try something else before we go back home, so to speak. So you heard this piece first on your piano. Yes, yes. So when you heard it on the guitar, uh, how surprised, uh, pleased or displeased were you? Uh, what, what did the guitar bring to it or not bring to it that the piano, uh, as opposed to the piano? Well, naturally the guitar is a, speaks with a softer voice. Yeah. So that, that was the first thing. But I knew that when I was writing it, I knew I knew it wasn't going to sound, you know, it, was, it, it just has a different voice. Yeah. So it's going to sound different. Yeah. But um, that that is the first thing that really stood out. Yeah. Is that the voice is softer, and so in in measure sixty one. Uh, hold on. The. Um, the yeah. power that uh, the octaves, yeah. Bah, yeah, the, yeah, 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 that I'm thinking as a pianist, it doesn't quite translate on the guitar. Yeah, yeah. Because it's it's a, just a different instrument. So yes, and uh, 
one thing the guitar can do, I don't know if you had in mind, is it can do these kind of color changes, mm -hmm. which we always brag about uh, the pianists. Um, you know, you can make sort of bright sounds mm -hmm. here, or a sweeter sound here. Yeah, yeah. And um, I don't know if you, and you wrote, I saw in your cadenza, Ponticello, so you were clearly aware of that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I was trying different things, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, well, is there anything else about the piece that you'd like us to know to help us uh, enjoy it? Um, well, I think we kind of explored, you know, the main points of the piece. Um, but that anchor, if you walk away, um, looking at it now, if you walk away kind of remembering um, measures of five, six, seven, eight, five through eight, if you yes. even walk away, somebody who's not a musician, yes, they kind of walk away sort of remembering that, I would find that to be a good thing. You'd be happy, yeah. Well, I did. I did. That, uh, that stuck in my brain for a while, the, the, that yeah. theme. Yeah, and I like and I like the way it sounded on the guitar. Yeah, you know, I like I like the way it sounded. Well, I hope you'll I hope it, uh, writing for the guitar will pique your curiosity to do more. Yeah, I would like to continue getting to know the instrument because there's this is a whole new world and there's yeah. a lot more that you know I could do on the instrument and I'm as long as I'm comfortable and I know more. You know, yeah. and still kind of uh, educating myself on this instrument. And one of my um, uh, things I like to preach about, you know, to, uh, just one of my pet bet noirs, I guess, is that there's not enough guitar and voice music. Oh. Uh, and, you know, in every other form of music, uh, you know, non classical, the guitar is a classic, you know, is the instrument for that singers use right folk music oh yeah all the time all yeah, the time, all the time. It's rock and roll every everything has its guitar and voice but not in classical music for some reason and so if you like to write songs i hope you write a song cycle with guitar that would be an interesting challenge yeah because i would because it's i could explore it as something more than because generally they're strumming you know, when they're accompanying like children's folk songs, it's like, they're not really doing all the guitar could actually do. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah. What, so the, that would be the, interesting challenge. You could check out um, Benjamin Britten. He wrote mm -hmm. two, two cycles and William Walton. They, they're the ones, uh, those cycles are played the most by classical guitarists. Mm -hmm. And um, maybe that will inspire you. Yeah. Um, yeah, come, I haven't heard, yeah, that combination. Well, it's very rare, and I've always thought it was crazy, because it seems like the most natural thing in the world to do. Mm -hmm. But that's just, that's just me getting on my soapbox. <laughs> um, so, Naila, is there anything else that you would like people to know about you or your music watching this video? Um, well, you can check out my YouTube uh, channel, you know, come by, check it out, you know, if you like it, subscribe. And uh, that's really about it. Yeah. What's your next project? Um, I'm working on something with Karen Slack um, and the Catalyst Quartet. So at the Skinny Atlas Festival, and that'll be coming up in, um, in August. I don't know year. Karen Slack. What does she do? She's an opera singer. Oh, so it's she's an opera piece. singer. She sang, she, she sings with the Met, you know, and oh. she's, you know, a really great singer. A great so singer. I'm, yeah, I'm working with her. So it'll be a string quartet and voice piece? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's great. And have you picked a, a text? Well, I, I had somebody write the text. So oh. once again, it's, you know, a living uh, poet, librettist, and they wrote the text, and it's going to be on the life of Harriet Tubman. So that's going to be an interesting project. Yeah. Do you know when it's going to come out? Um, it's August 19th. August 19th. Okay. Yeah. Well, 
I really enjoyed getting to meet you a little bit. Thanks. And, uh, I think we, we're done unless there's anything else you want to say. No, no, that's it. I'm, I'm okay. good. <laughs>